Hello guys, hi, how are you? How are you doing, Mama Bear? In the building this evening, I am so excited to bring you a very good friend of mine by name Anne. You can check her on her YouTube channel. She calls herself 254 Nurse, Online Nurse. So guys, tonight we have a very, very good topic. It's a topic that I've already spoken about on my channel. It's about fistula. But that time I was just talking about my own uh, experience. Today we have a professional who happens to be a clinical officer in Mama Lucy Hospital. So guys, welcome. There are so many people who have come my way telling me, Mama Bea, what did you do? How did you find help? my god guys it's overwhelming to see how many women are really dealing with this issue uh and uh for that case i have really tried and gone out of my my way and really tried to get people uh professional people to really come through and tell us a little bit about it and guys stay with us up to the end of the video because i will also give you a very good information at the end of the video about how you can get help if you're out there you know all those women that have uh, contacted me even those that are in qatar and saudi arabia telling me that they have the same uh, problem you have a solution okay so guys stay with me let me int uh, our, our friend to introduce herself and tell us a little bit more about fistula how it happens and how uh, we can get help so welcome my dear how are you? Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, allowing, uh, accepting to come to my video, to my channel. Thank you. I don't take it for granted for giving yourself this chance. I know there are many things you would have, we'd be doing tonight, yeah. but you just gave yourself this time uh, for us, for this family, you know, guys. Thank you so much. So please go right ahead and tell us a little bit more about that. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Bea, for having me in your channel. Yes. Uh, my name is Ann Kim. I'm 247 online nurse. And today we'll be looking at the medical perspective of fistula. So we are going to look at what is fistula, what are the causes of fistula, the prevention measures, uh, some of the signs and symptoms that you can have uh, that can lead you to having fistula, and also the treatment of fistula. So. Let's go ahead and look at fistula. So fistula is an abnormal uh, connection between two organs, uh, which normally is not supposed to be there. So fistula can occur in all parts of the body, and the most common type of fistula is obstetric fistula. So when you're talking about obstetric fistula, this is a medical condition whereby you'll develop a hole in the birth canal when a mother is giving birth. So there are so many causes of uh, fistula that lead a mother to having a fistula. And one of them is uh, having a prolonged or an obstructed labor. So when, some, when we are saying somebody is having an obstructed labor, this is whereby uh, there is a disproportion between the baby and the maternal parts of the mother, so that is the birth canal where the baby is penetrating through. So it's it's not uh, it's the baby is not in a position to flow well through the birth canal. So some of other uh, causes can be cancer can also lead to fistula. When you're having some surgery, it's, uh, for example, when you're having uh, something we call hysterectomy, that is the removal of uh, uterus, we can also uh, have end up with fistula. Some diseases like um, mm, measles can also cause fistula. So let's focus on signs and symptoms that can tell you that for sure this mother is having a fistula. When there is leakage of stool and uh, uh, feces and uh, the leakage is usually the mother is not aware that the the, the urine or the feces is leaking. When you're having a full smelling vaginal discharge, can also be a sign of somebody is having a fistula. Then when you're having a vaginal or urethral, recurrent vaginal or urethral or infections, as in the urethra, 
you're treated, then eventually they will recur, you're treated, and then they recur. So it means something is wrong down there. So other signs and symptoms could be when you're having your sexual, uh, you can be having painful sexual intercourse, can also be, can also be a sign of fistula. So when you're having these signs, it's good for you to look for medical attention. So when you go to hospital, just explain what you're having, the signs and symptoms that you're having, then the doctor will make a diagnosis of a fistula. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of the treatments uh, that some, a mother having a fistula undergo, it's a holistic approach. So this mother is going through a lot is having depression, is having stigma, rejection from the community, from the family, from the spouse. So this is a mother who needs a lot of counseling. The other intervention is uh, the surgery. When you have your surgery, uh, if you have a collective surgery whereby they are going to repair your down there, your, the parts they are repaired very well to their normal, uh, to their normal shape. So you also need uh, nursing care, because you're taking care of that wound. You also need antibiotic, you also need uh, the dressing of that wound. You also need um, physiotherapy. Physiotherapy occur in a, in, in a whereby we are having uh, something we call foot drop. Foot drop is whereby uh, the mother is unable to walk because the nerves, the nerves of the lower lips, they are, they are damaged. So you have this mother is, in a, is not in a position to walk, so that's where the physiotherapist comes in. So the other approach of treatment that uh, we usually have is um, nutritional support. For this mother to heal very fast, we need a balanced diet, and that's why the nutrition come about. So. That's why we are talking of a holistic approach, because we are looking at this mother from the mentor, the nutrition, the counseling side, the counseling uh, section, and we are also looking at the wound itself. So, some of the prevention measures that we take is uh, for this mother who have a fistula, we usually recommend for cesarean section. Then, uh, the other measure that we take to prevent uh, the fistula is the, the family planning. The family planning in the sense that this mother is in, in a position to plan for uh, the childbirth. For example, uh, when, when a mother is not in a position to take care of the baby the, and also the, the, the reproductive organs have not developed, that is, giving birth at a very tender age also can also cause this fistula. The other prevention measures is um, to prevent malnutrition. Malnutrition can also lead to fistula in the sense that the, the reproductive organs for this child or for this girl, for this woman has not properly developed due to lack of proper nutrition. So when you prevent malnutrition, we are also going to prevent fistulas. Mm -hmm. Then the other one is uh, preventing um, FGM. Because you'll find that FGM, to some extent, it causes fistula because the way they usually cut the reproductive organs for the woman, you'll find that they will leave uh, they will cut the labias, then they will just leave the, the hole, the vagina hole. And to some point, I don't know, if they suture that hole, then it becomes very tight. So when this uh, woman is giving birth, it becomes uh, very difficult, and the chances of getting the fistula is very high. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, also, I think we've talked a lot about fistula. Mm -hmm. And uh, tell us something about fistula, tell us something, what you went through, what are yeah. the signs that you saw, what are the treatment that you got from the hospital. Yeah, yeah so that's other women mm. who are there suffering, mm. having the same symptoms, mm. having the same problem, they can also get help. Exactly. Yeah.
yeah so guys you have had all the ways one can get that uh disease or is it a disease no it's not it's a condition. condition it's a medical condition it's a condition it's not a disease guys it's it's a medical condition that that thank you because that's why we have a a professional here for me um for me i remember after giving birth to my first child my first child was really big like i've seen in my all these stories are in my channel but again let me just for the purpose of those people that have not seen it my first child was very big uh, and in medical condition they are called large babies right mm -hmm. yeah they're not called big babies they're called large babies i had a large baby my first child was 4.1 kilos and that time i was really tiny you can imagine the damage i had a third degree tear at that time Thank God, I got my child in um, Pumweni Hospital. I was very well corrected. But again, there is something the doctor forgot to tell me. The doctor would have told me at that time that I will, I'm supposed to, in case I need to have a second child, I should consider CS. That's what you said. Yes, yes. So, um, because of that tear, and uh, they gave me an, uh, the, no, now this, this is the information I was getting the second time. The first time they didn't tell me. So when I got pregnant with my second child, who also happened to be a large baby, another four kilos, and I think now, what, what makes people give birth to? Is it something to do with uh, genetics? Or what makes someone just keep giving birth to large babies? What do you think? Uh, one could be genet the genes. Yeah. The other one also could be the intake. The intake of food yeah. during pregnancy can also make you to have a big baby. Well. Uh, and also, if you have conditions like diabetes, mm -hmm. diabetics mothers, they can usually give birth to big babies. Okay. Yes. Wow, that's something new I've learned. For me, I wouldn't even say it was, uh, of course, a no diabetic. Then again, I cannot say it's about uh, large intakes because, let me say, I during my pregnancies, I've just always... Kwanza, the first time I gave birth to the first child, now the second one, you can be sure that I was very, very cautious. Even eating was a problem. So, because I, I, I was worried, I didn't want to give birth to a big baby. I knew what I'd gone through last time, so I was saying, my goodness, I don't want another four kilo baby. So for me, I would think it's genetics. Uh, because apparently from my side and from my partner's side, I understand the, the mother had told me that all her children were very large babies. So the second child now I gave birth and you can imagine the tear was there and now this time it was bad, it was big. Because you can imagine now the doctor told me, asked me how, what did you, the first time did you get a tear? I was like yes, it was a third degree tear. Then. Were you not told to give birth uh, through CS? I said no. So they told me that is the problem. The first doctor said, I don't blame them. Many, you know, in Pumwani, it's a busy hospital. Busy hospital, very many babies being born at the same time. So maybe just keep their mind so I cannot blame them. Uh, so they forgot to tell me that. So now the second tear was big. And I remember the second doctor now telling me uh, for an example of a torn cloth. Assuming this t-shirt of mine has been torn right here and then it's switched, switched stitched. stitched. Now if you pull it once again, the same place that had a tear will be the first one also to tear. It will not tear another part, it will tear exactly, yes. And the second one, it, it, it's even worse. So it was inevitable. Uh, but now I know, now I'm far much wiser that in case I will need to have a third child in future, of which I'm not planning, but <laughs> God, uh, God uh, knows. Eh? Uh, now I know I will definitely have to go under the knife. Hmm? Under the knife, guys. Anyway, uh, so I was stitched, switched. Now in the, the stitched. And uh, now after that, I remember now I started having the leakage. For me, I was not leaking uh, urine. For me, I was leaking stool. And like she said, the mother is not aware. For me, I remember I on only got aware maybe when I was going to the loo, and then maybe I just gone for a short call. And of course, you know, for us ladies, we wipe when we go for a short call. And then I find 
poop on the tissue and I'm thinking, wow, does it mean that I don't know how to clean myself anymore? So it went on and on. This time I went back to the hospital and the doctor told me keep doing the Kegel exercises. That is what they are called. Yeah. Guys, I know you, you know them. Eh? Yeah. The tightening of uh, down there. You tighten, you tighten, you tighten. I kept doing that and I did that over and over. One month, two months, three months, eh? six months down the line. And remember all this time I'm going to the doctor and uh, they are looking at me and they tell, they're telling me we can't see any problem but again this problem is not ending and now the story you can look at it on the on the on the channel but again i remember now one day just taking a step of faith and uh, going to to kenyatta national hospital whereby dr kisa i still uh thank you so much together with nurse naomi i will never stop being so happy for you guys because you restored my dignity and today I'm a very very happy woman and one look one look at me by Dr. Kisa he said I remember very well it was on a Thursday he said come on Monday I was booked on Monday and on Tuesday I got my surgery I thank God so much so that is how for me I realized I had an issue because I kept now that leakage, the, the leaking, the leaking. So, uh, unfortunately, there are very many women that are going through the same. And uh, they have reached me, and uh, ladies, and uh, and also let me address everybody, because there is a man who will be watching this, and your wife, or your sister, your cousin, anybody that is uh, your neighbor, somebody who might be going through this, and you might want to help them so uh and also ladies that have have reached me i know you're there so many of you even someone from qatar another one from saudi arabia and uh it's unfortunate because i wouldn't know how to help you now when you're there but again i can tell you that those those ones that are here in kenya there is help okay guys there is a lot of help our dear clinical officer here and she's already told us about all that we, we need to know about uh, the fistula my story is also on the video and uh, sorry on the channel you can go watch it but again this time the reason as to why I have brought it back is because guys I have good news I have good news and before I go to the good news that I have for you so that you know that really I am thinking about you guys you have been asking me mama bear please help us mama bear please help us how did you get to get your surgery your corrective surgery today you look happy and uh, yeah i am because i have been restored my dignity has been restored uh, before i tell you the good news that i have first of all i say thank you so much my dear please if, before I, I finish do you have anything else you any question you need to ask me or anything that you feel like you need to add something i need to add is that uh, if you're having uh, the symptoms that we've talked about earlier, if you're leaking stools, uh, urine, you're having that vaginal discharge which is called smelling, and all the signs and symptoms that uh, look similar to that of fistula, it is good for you to seek medical attention, go to the hospital, explain the symptoms that you're having to a doctor, then they will examine you, and if they confirm for sure it's fistula, and especially in public hospital, they will book you for surgery. And also be on the lookout, uh, there are usually uh, medical camps for fistula. So if you ever hear of medical camps, it is good for you to attend them. And also get checked. If it's fistula, you'll get a surgery. Thank you so much, our doctor. She is called 247 Online Nurse. So you can reach her. I will leave her descriptions on the bar below and uh, you can support her. And of course, in any question you need to ask, she got you. So guys, here is the most awaited good news that I had for you today. So guys, drum rolls. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I am so excited to tell you guys that I have somebody who reached to me after seeing my story on my YouTube channel and they told me, they called me and told me, Mama Bea, I have seen what you've been talking about and we have something to give to those women out there. So Mama Bea, in collaboration with the Flying Doctors, I thank God because they have called me and told me that they will be offering free, guys, can you underline free, corrective surgery. The only thing you need to have is your NHIF, which you will you have already paid don't just go pick it and uh, and uh, you think no have it but again another good news guys another good news is that even if you don't have they are not discriminating they are not discriminating because they said it's women dignity being restored so guys the next video you will see me with i will be with the flying doctors and guys we are going all the way to make sure that these ladies you lovely ladies and you lovely guys with your wives that are having that issues with your sisters with your everybody that you know has that problem tell a friend to tell a friend comment on this uh channel here tell me mama bear you know just tell me let me know that you because you know i read all the comments i will know if you need that help and uh we will be there to make sure that guys you are helped some of us we really struggled we had to really put in a lot of money but god really does work, work wonders because he is coming through for you for free because jesus has made it to be okay so thank you guys so much thank you my dear for coming to my channel i am so excited i am so happy for bringing uh, that awareness to us some of us were sick but now the terminologies and the means and ways of everything we didn't know but again thank you so much god bless you continue encouraging people i know people will try reach you to also know about those medical camps maybe you can the, she talks a lot about such kind of things on her channel so look for her 254 online nurse she will tell you when those camps come uh, meanwhile i will also connect all of you with the flying doctors so that everybody will be restored so thank you guys i love you so much you are awesome keep sharing keep liking keep commenting let me know what you think about today's episode and we love you until the next episode bye bye and bye. we love you ciao <laughs>